chance to share first place and knock off the league's only unbeaten team, the Chiefs. Without further delay, let's go to 12 Sports reporter Marshall Harris. He's got all the highlights. Marshall. Thank you, Harvey, and thank you, Sports Illustrated. It appears the Bengals' upset could be a classic case of the dreaded SI cover jinx. Then again, it could be the result of the Bengals outplaying Kansas City in every facet of the game. Either way, Chad Johnson and company found a way to make good on his guarantee. They guarantee it on Monday. It's Sunday. Let's dominate. Dominate on three. One, two, three. Dominate. Twelve sports reporter Eric Gerhardt and Ed Burkholder were all at Paul Brown Stadium, as were 64,923 fogged in fans, a new stadium record. Bengals gave up good field position early and often. Chiefs starting at midfield on the first two drives, but the defense steps up. Second and six, Tony Williams stuffs Priest Holmes for no gain. Casey held to just 20 yards rushing in the first half. Then it's Corey Dillon checking in after missing the last two home games. Dillon crisp right here. Cuts back for 10 yards on the carry. CD with 21 yards on six carries for the game. Still scoreless and the Chiefs looking to draw first blood. Trent Green dropping back, going up top to Eddie Kennison. Artro Hawkins, not enough to stop the pass. Rodgers Beckett, though, comes over to make the hit and save a score. Once again, it was Rudy doing the bulk of the groundwork for the Bengals. Second quarter, first and 10 from the 49, breaks the wannabe tackler and gets a block from Chad Johnson to get free down the left sideline for 38 yards before it being knocked out of bounds. 11 carries, 71 yards and a half for him. That drive, those stalls at the eight. Shane Graham kicks a 27-yard field goal. Bengals go up 3-0. Six minutes left in the half, first and 10 for the Chiefs from their own 40. Trent Green back to pass. Trent Green on his back. Rodgers Beckett putting him there. Loss of nine. Chiefs go three and out. Ensuing drive. Bengals get down to the KC 30. Graham had a chance to make it 6 0 with a 48 yard field goal, but it's wide left. His first miss inside 50 all year. A late Chiefs field goal ties it at three at the half. Opening drive of the third quarter. Priest gets 20 of his 62 yards on one carry. Chiefs would get a field goal and take a 6 3 lead. John Kittner, though, bringing the Bengals right back inside the 30 and driving, makes Sean Barber miss, and then hits Chad Johnson for a 13-yard pickup on the very next play. More Kittner this time to Jeremy Johnson. Johnson gets the catch, gives Mike Maslowski a stiff arm, and the Bengals the lead a 13-yard diving touchdown around the pylon. 10-6 Cincinnati. Same score in the fourth. After a Kansas City three and out, Peter Wark back for the punt. And that one is postmarked return to center. He gets an alley and runs right through it. No one's going to catch him. 68 yards for the score. First Bengals punt return for a touchdown since Warwick did it against the Jaguars back in 2000. Bengals up 17-6 and smelling the upset. Just over nine minutes to play. Trent Green caps off a 92-yard drive with a 12-yard touchdown pass to Gonzalez. Casey's tied in with seven catches, 86 yards. Two-point conversion would be no good, though. Bengals lead still cut to 17-12. Bengals get the ball back on the 23. First play and Kitna goes for the jugular. Hooking up with P-Dub. He breaks the Eric Warfield tackle and breaks off a 77-yard touchdown reception. Six catches for a career-high 114 yards. Bengals go up 24-12 with just over six minutes to play. KC's quick strike offense strikes back. Drive 71 yards in under three minutes. Green finds Jason Dunn for a touchdown. Green 28-42. 313 yards and two scores, but it's still 24-19 Bengals. Cincinnati gets the ball back with 319 left. Second and four from their own 17. Rudy eating up time and eating up yards. Headed for a 54-yard pickup, the longest of his career all told. 165 yards on 22 carries. Bengals able to run out the clock and hand Kansas City its first loss, 24-19. You played your butt off from the first snap to the last snap the same way. Offense the same way. It didn't stop from the first time you had yeah, the ball. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We got the show. We got the show. We got the show. From the first step, first snap to the last snap. Special teams. Special from the first snap to the last snap. Now, but more importantly, we earned a right. We earned the right to play for our division lead again. Yes, yes, sir. yes sir. That's yes, what sir. we keep doing. We keep earning more opportunities. We earn more opportunities to push harder yes, and sir. to get better and to smile more and have more fun because there's more opportunity ahead. There'll be a lot of game balls for this game. But the one, and I know he's not here yet, that I'm most thankful for is Mike Brown. You tell him. 
because he's endured a lot for you guys. You're killing me. And it's hard. And he means it for you guys. Sorry, yes, sorry. he does. And he's going to get this guy. All right, man. Obviously, an emo emotional Marvin Lewis who implored the team during the week to keep shoveling the dirt and keep working. That's the ongoing theme inside the locker room. We have played now against three division winners or leaders, and, and we've beaten them. And that's important, uh, that, that we can play football like the rest. You know, from the time we got started, we said we were going to bring the NFL back here. And, and that was NFL football out there today. It was the NFL atmosphere. It was fun. Everybody had fun. When you come to this stadium, you ought to be here for fun. And that's what we're having. It's nice beating the, beating the Chiefs, being them, being 9-0 and and all that stuff. But the, the biggest thing for us is we have now, our, our heads are peeking out over that hole that we dug for ourselves early in the season. I went to TJ and said, I'm about to seal this one with a kiss. He's like, what you mean? I said, I'm about to show you. And then when I went out there, I seen the hole just open. And everybody did their job. And, you know, it wasn't Dante Hall, it was P-Dub. <laughs> All I'm doing is believing and from the heart. I'm sure everybody felt the same way we were going to win. I just happened to open my mouth and put it publicly. So uh, I'm glad they backed me up. But again, you know, I apologize to them you know, after the game for putting any pressure on anybody. Our 12th sports game ball goes to Peter Ward. Six catches for 114 yards and a score. That huge 68-yard punt return for a score plus another 11 yards on the ground. Harvey, time to hear what the fans have to say. In the AFC North, how about give us a ring at 345-1212. Register your vote. We'll have results solid later in our show. Now, our analysts are here to heap praise and toss our verbal bouquets out there for you. It's who asked you. So let's turn it over to the voice of the Bengals, Brad Johansson. Oh, Brad. Harvey, thanks very much. Who asked you? Richard Skinner, 1360, the sports animal. Joe Walter, former Bengal gentleman. Thanks for coming in. How big is this? Huge. I mean, can you imagine the Bengals, as we speak this minute, not only are in first place, but control their own destiny? Because mm -hmm. if they went out, Baltimore can't do anything. Now, can they win out? Probably not. But they control their own destiny in the middle of November. It, it, going into this week, did you think there was any chance they'd win this game? No. I said that last week. And now I guess I'm eating my words, eating crow today. Uh, uh, how much better did they play than you thought they could play? They played a great game. That was probably the first time I've seen all year that this, or shoot in 10 years, that a Bengals team has put all facets together and just played a dominated ball game. And that's what they did today. Marvin Lewis gives the game ball to Mike Brown, but who does the real game ball go to for you? Uh, honestly, Peter Warwick and or the secondary, just because Peter made two huge plays. I mean, obviously the punt return and then, then turning that catch into, into, the, into the touchdown as well. But the secondary, let's face it, they were, all, they were on the block today sure. because of who they were playing sure. against. Uh, and, and, you know, I just thought on, on every big pass play, it seemed like, uh, you know, before... Kansas City was playing catch-up. They made plays. They were knocking balls down. They were batting balls away. They were knocking balls loose. They were outstanding, the whole group. I mean, it was one different guy each and every play, it seemed like. Rudy Johnson, is he the real deal? I think so. What a great – he's a powerful back. Um, just really got to watch him today. It was great to be able to watch it on TV and see the replays and just watch this guy not want to go down. I mean, just a tremendous back, got good wheels, good legs, good tenacity. And, you know, kudos to the offensive line. They did a great job today for him as well. Okay, I'll start the controversy. What do you do if you have a healthy Corey Dillon? And that's obviously what they did. Rudy's doing his job. They sit Corey Dillon down after six carries. Do you run both of them? What do you do? I, I think you do, but I think you still have to stay with the hot hand as long as you can. I thought the formula today was good, and then obviously taking Corey out, you know, changed things up. But I, I think you have to play Rudy. How do you sit a guy down who's had the success he's had the last three home games running the football? You, you can't, even though if it hurts Corey's yeah. feelings. So, so what? You still can get Corey 10, 12, 15 carries if he's healthy. You can get Rudy 15, 20 carries if he's healthy. I mean, this defense was amazing. When you give them only half a field to deal with in the first half like they did, and the defense stands up, it's, and they haven't been able to stop the run. Priest Holmes comes in as an all-world back. The defense has arrived. You can tell they're getting, they finally figured this system out. They're getting used to Marvin's ways of thinking. They know what they're supposed to do. They know where they're supposed to be. And you can tell that today. They just had a tremendous all-around game, and I said that a couple of times. It was just a great game for the team as a whole. The defense just played tremendously And special well. teams was really spectacular for the first time. Yeah, and, and, and early on, Dante Hall came a smidge, it looked like, from sure, breaking a couple. Sure. I mean, But you it, make tackles. You have to right. tackle the guy, and that's what they that's did. That's exactly right. And then the one punt where they pinned him deep in their own territory uh, was, was huge. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, they, they did a great job all the way around, no question. Okay, how good a quarterback is John Kitna? Uh, you know, he's still, I'm not going to put him in the upper echelon. I just can't do it yet. And, 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 you know, one half of one season, or really one third, essentially, of a season, doesn't overcome everything else. But the guy's made plays that, that have won football games, and he deserves all the credit for that. He's always had the intangibles. We've always known that. Uh, you know, Willie Anderson even called him the other day. Called him point blank a leader on the football yeah. team when he was kind of running down Chad, or, uh, Chad Johnson. Uh, you know, right, right now, what he is is a winner. I'll give him credit for that. Chad Johnson's pretty good on guarantees. How good is <laughs> Marvin Lewis? Marvin Lewis is a good coach. I like what he's done with his team. I like his philosophy. He's got these guys finally starting to believe in themselves. They haven't won on the West Coast yet, guys. Do they win in San Diego? I, I can't say that they will, Brad, for that reason. And I think one of the things, one of the fears is, and I'm not on a day when everybody's happy, is three-game road swing. That's very difficult yeah. in the NFL. In addition to that, just hope there's not this, who we really accomplished something today. They did. They accomplished something great today. Back but to there's work. still six games left to go. Back to work. Gentlemen, thanks for coming in. Appreciate it, Joe. Mm -hmm. Richard. Harvey, we'll send it back to you. The Bengals win the AFC North. 69% on that bandwagon say yes. 31% say no. Thanks if you're one of the more than hundreds and hundreds of callers who phoned us here tonight. And welcome back. Time to hand out our NFL game balls. I get one. Brad gets one. The crew gets one. They are the 12 sports game breakers. I go first, and P-Dub is the definition of a game-breaker. 212 total yards, two scores, sparking the upset of the Chiefs. Now Brad takes quarterback Kelly Holcomb, 29 for 35, 392 yards, three touchdown passes. The Browns 44 points, the most since returning to Cleveland. And the Colts, Edron James becomes the Colts, uh, Edron James becomes the Colts' all-time leading rusher, 127 yards, three big touchdowns in the 